chapter one of The Skin I'm In by Sharon G. Flank. Chapter one. The first time I'd seen her, I got a bad feeling inside. Not like I was in danger or nothing. Just like she was somebody I should stay clear of. To tell the truth, she was a freak like me. The kind of person folks can't help but tease. That's bad if you're a kid like me. It's worse for a new teacher like her. Miss Saunders is as different as they come. First off, she's got a man's name, Michael. Now, who ever heard of a woman named that? She's tall and fat like nobody's business. And she's got the smallest feet I'd ever seen. Worse yet, she's got a giant white stain spread halfway across her face like somebody tossed acid on it or something. I try not to stare at the first day that Amazon woman teacher heads my way. See, I got a way of attracting strange characters. They draw to me like somebody stuck a note on my forehead saying losers wanted here. Well, I spend a lot of time trying to fit in here at McClinton's Middle School. I ain't let nobody ruin it for me, especially no teacher. Dun, dun, dun. I don't even look up when Miss Saunders comes up to me that day like I'm some kind of information center. Excuse me, she says. She's wearing a dark purple suit and a starched white shirt with matching purple buttons. That outfit cost $300, easy. I'm trying to find the principal's office. I know it's around here somewhere. Can you help me? Before I catch myself, my eyes ricochet like ping balls, bounding from John John McTreary's beardy brown eyes right up to her. I swallowed hard, stare at her till John John whacks me on the arm with his rolled up comic book. That's a way, I say, pointing up the hall. Thank you. Now what's your name, she says, putting down her briefcase like she's gonna stay here a while. Malik, Malik Madison the third. I said, smacking my gum real loud. Don't let that fancy name fool you, John John Button. She ain't no, nobody worth knowing. Miss Saunders stared down at him till he turned his head away and starts playing with the buttons on his shirt like some two-year-old. Like I say, the office is that away. I pointed. Thank you, she says, walking off. Then she stopped stone still, like some bright idea had just come to her. Turn around and head back my way. Turns around and heads back my way. My skin started to crawl before she even opened her mouth. Malika, your skin is pretty like a blue black sky after it's rained and rained she says that's a simile then she smiles and explains how that line comes from a favorite poem of hers next time i know she heads down the hall again like nothing much happened sorry let me repeat that Next thing I know, she's heading down the hall again like nothing much happened. When she's far enough away, John John says to me, I don't see no pretty, just a whole lot of black. Before I can punch him good, he's singing a rap song. Malika, Malika, bam, boom, <laughs> boom, boom. We sure want to keep her baboom, boom, boom, but she's the black baboom, boom, boom. We can't 
We just can't see her. Before I know it, three more boys is pointing at me and singing that song too. Me, I'm wishing the building will collapse on, on top of me. Hyperbole. John John McCurry is the smallest seventh grader in the world. Even fifth graders can see over his head. Sometimes I have a hard time believing he and I are both 13. He's my color, but since second grade, he's been teasing me about being too black. Last year, when I thought things couldn't get worse, get no worse, he came up with this here song. Now, here this woman comes talking that black stuff, stirring him up again. Seems like people been teasing me all my life. If it ain't about my color, it's my clothes. Mama makes them by hand. They look it too. Lopsided pockets stretched forever unraveling, stitching forever unraveling. I never know when a collar is going to fall off or a push pin is going to stick me and make me holler out in class. I stopped worrying about that this year now that Charlize lends me clothes to wear. I stash them in the locker and change into them before first period. Mm, how many of you guys have done that? Just make that mental connection. I'm like Superman. Simile. When I get Charlize's clothes on, I got a new attitude, and my teacher sure don't like it none. Mm -mm -mm. It's bad enough that I'm the darkest, worst dressed thing in school. I'm also the tallest, skinniest thing you ever seen. And people like John John remind me of it every chance they get. They don't say nothing about the fact that I'm a math whiz and can outdo ninth graders when it comes to figuring numbers or that I got a good memory and never forget one single solitary thing I read. They only see what they see and they don't seem to like what they see much. Mm, I can relate to that sometimes. Can you? Up till now, I just took it, the name calling the pushing and shoving and cheating off of me. Then last week, something happened. I was walking down the hall in one of Cher's dresses, strutting my stuff, looking good. Then Cher walked up to me and told me to take off her clothes. There was maybe eight or nine kids around when she said it too, including Caleb. I thought she was kidding. She wasn't. So I went to the girls' room and put my own stuff back on. That's when I made up my mind. Enough is enough. I deserve better than for people to treat me any old way they want. But saying that is one thing, making it happen is something else. So you see, I got my own troubles. I don't need no Scarface teacher making things worse for me. But I got this feeling Miss Saunders is gonna mess things up for me real bad. Mm. That's the end of chapter one. I was thinking while I was reading this, how many connections I had to this in my own way. Um, when I was 13 and you guys are approaching that age or are that age and uh, maybe you can relate to it too. I mean, having secondhand clothes, um, not being happy with or in your own skin um, and having been embarrassed uh, a teacher saying something strange to you, a friend that's a friend that kind of makes fun of you, 
Um, I just hope that you can relate to that. And I can't wait to read chapter two to you guys. Have a good night.